Hi guys, welcome to today's QGIS tutorial. In today's lesson, we'll look at two common ways used by remote sensing experts to download Landsat data. In order to serve you better and be able to cater for all your questions and your special training needs, we are launching WiseJS Academy. You can follow this link for more information. You can also join our Patreon by following the link in the description below. Let's go straight to today's exercise. So today we are going to be looking at downloading Landsat 8 data. Landsat 8 data is an American Earth Observation Satellite launched in 11th of February in 2013. It is the eighth satellite in the Landsat program, the seventh to reach orbit successfully. Application of Landsat imagery include land use, land cover, agricultural management, fish and wildlife science, forest science, watershed management, climate change, air, energy and mineral development, defense, urban planning, cultural resources and management in anthropology and archaeology, education, and then emergency or disaster management. So let's look at the first way that you can actually download these Landsat 8 data. So we are going to go to a browser. In this case, I'm going to be using Google Chrome, so I'm going to open Google Chrome. Then in the search button, I'm going to look for Earth Explorer. And then hit enter then I'll select at explorer.usgs.gov and it will take me straight into at explorer so you can actually see that I have some world map here where I can zoom in and out and pan around so the next thing you want to do is you want to just select a region where we want to do our analysis or our, we want to actually get the Landsat 8 data from. So I'm just going to zoom into an area that I want to get my data off and I'm going to go to Uganda here. And I want a region around like Albert here. So I'm just going to zoom out a bit. So this is my target area where I want to actually download Landsat 8 data. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to make some nice polygon here as my area of interest. So I'm going to click on this first point here, second point, third point, fourth point. After selecting my area of interest, I'm now going to go to data set. And actually, before we, we, we select these, I'm actually going to just scroll down here so that you can see the kind of features that are available here. And you can see you can actually customize and say maybe you want some certain cloud cover range or certain results that you need but i'm not going to go into this first now that i have selected my area of interest i'm now going to go to data set so i'm going to click on the data set then there are very very many kinds of data sets that are available in earth explorer but you're interested with landsat so i'm going to select landsat just going to pan down like this a bit then i'm going to select landsat then I'm going to select Landsat Collection 1. Then I'm going to scroll down again and I'm going to select Landsat Collection 1 Level 1. And within Landsat level, uh, Collection 1 Level 1, you can see there's Landsat 8, Landsat 7, Landsat 4, 5, Landsat 1 to 5. So what I'm interested in is I'm interested in the Landsat 8, so I'm going to select Landsat 8. Once I have selected Landsat 8, I'll go to the additional criteria and I can do a little bit of customization. Like for example, I can say I want I can say I want the land cloud cover to be a certain percentage. So I'm going to select land cloud cover. Then I'm going to say maybe say less than 10%. Then I'm going to also do the same thing to the sin cloud cover. And I'm going to also say I want it to be less than 10%. And you can actually do a lot of other customizations depending on how you want to get your data. 
So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on result to get my results and it will start searching for my results and possible uh, Landsat images for that region. So you can actually see it has given me some results here and you can look at them using the date here. This is 2021. This is 2021, uh, February, the 9th of February, 2021. That is when it was actually acquired. And you can actually look and see all the other results. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scroll through and I can see actually there's some image here. When I click on it, it is it looks a bit clear and with less cloud cover. So this might be interesting to me because I might be wanting to do some analysis in this area. So I think I have the data that I want to download. And for example, if you want to just look at some of the data that is around the, the whole of this area, because of the, they, they have different parts and row, you can see this is part 173, row 58, and this is 173, row 59. We can actually click on this foot here to just look at their placement. So when I click on this foot here, you can see this is the path that it is placed on. When I click on the other foot here on the, 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 the Landsat image above, and you'll see it is now for this region. So for example, if I'm working on the whole of these two regions, I can actually download both of these data and then merge the data and use it. I can click on the other foot below here and you will see it actually is for the image below here. So I'm just going to actually and check the two because I already just want to download only this uh, image for this area. Then I'll scroll on my right and you can see there is the download option here. And you can see for me, the download option is active. It is actually active. This is because I have already logged in. If you haven't logged in into Earth Explorer, you need to actually create an account with Earth Explorer. But since I've already logged into Earth Explorer, I'm just going to click on download so that I can download my Landsat 8 image. So I'm going to click on download and it will load the options, the download options for me. So you can see the first image is natural color image. It's just a natural color image. It's a thermal image, which is very small, 1.6 MB. Then there is the Landsat look quality image, which is also small in size. Then there is the geographic reference, which is also small. But what we're interested in is the level one GeoTIFF data product, which is actually a big file. So you can see for my case, it's actually 815 MB. So I'm going to click on download. This is actually the file that has all the information that I want for my Landsat 8 image. So I'm going to click on download and then wait for it to start my download. Then I'm going to select the folder where I'm going to start downloading it. So I'm going to download it into a Landsat 8 data folder that I had, I had actually created. And it's a, a .tar file, so I'm going to click on save. And then I'm going to click on start download. And this is actually going to take some time, so I'm going to just go to the next step. See you when my download is complete. We have our result, which is a .tar file. So what I'm going to do is, um, in order for me to access the information that is in, I'm going to unzip this file so i'm going to right click on on the file then i'm going to extract it in this folder and now we can access our landsat files for the area of interest and you can see it has all the bands that are necessary for our different kinds of analysis so you can see there is band one band two band three band 4, band 5, band 6, band 7, band 8, band 9, band 10, band 11. Then there, there is this band, band BQA. And we have the MTL file, which is very, very important. We're actually going to, be, to, to, to see its use when we are actually doing our next step. So let's go to QGIS and load our data. So we are going to load our Landsat data in QGIS by creating a new blank project. And then... It, since it's a raster layer, we're going to go to layer, add layer, add raster layer. Then we're going to browse where our raster layers are. Data, Landsat, 8 data, and we can open the file and you can see we have all our, 
our data available. So I'm going to actually just load the layers into QGIS, add, close. And you can actually see now we have our Landsat data in QGIS. So that's the first way of how to download Landsat data. And you can see there are different bands that actually have some different kinds of information depending on reflectance. So the second way you can actually download Landsat 8 data is by using QGIS as the software. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just first remove all these Landsat data that we have actually downloaded here. So the second method that you can actually download your Landsat data without even actually going to the Earth Explorer site is by using a plugin in QGIS called the SCP plugin, the semi-automatic classification plugin. So I'm going to go to plugins. It's a plugin that you haven't actually installed. So I'm going to go to plugins, manage and install plugins. Then I'm going to go select all here. And then I'm going to search for the semi semi-automatic classification plugin, I can see it's here, semi-automatic classification plugin, then I'm going to click on install, and the semi-automatic classification plugin is actually a very, very useful plugin, especially in remote sensing, and we're actually going to be using this plugin so much in our subsequent lessons, so it's very, very important that you learn how to use this plugin. It was developed by Luca, and it has actually so many downloads almost a million downloads. So I'm going to click on install the plugin. And the plugin has been installed successfully. So I'm going to click on close and you can actually see the SCP doc has been added here. And above here, you can actually see on the toolbar, we also have some new functionalities here. So the next, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, close this first for the me, for the time being first here. So that you can still have a blank, uh, only a blank layers panel. I'm going to show you how we can actually return the SCP doc here. So actually on the menu bar, you can actually see the SCP has been added here. We actually want to learn how to download now the Landsat 8 imagery without actually going to Earth Explorer. So I'm going to select the SCP menu. Then it has actually so many functionalities that we are actually going to be looking at in the subsequent lessons. But what you're interested in is we are interested in downloading a product and so I'm going to select download product and the kind of product that, that I'm actually interested in is the, let me just uh, <clears throat> pull this window here up so that, pull make this win, window a bit bigger so that you can actually see whatever I'm doing. <clears throat> then the next thing you want to do is we want to look at the product. What kind of product do you want to select? There are actually so many products that you, you can actually download. So for our case, we want to download the Landsat 8 data, which is the L8 only data here. So I'm going to select Landsat 8 data here. Then you can actually customize the dates if you want for specific dates, you can actually customize here. Your maximum cloud cover, you can actually reduce it to maybe 10% or 20%, depending on what you want. So, for, but for the first thing we need to actually look at these tabs here. There is the login tab, the search tab, and then there is the download option tab. The first thing you actually do is you actually go to the login tab and you can actually see there are three ways of actually logging in and downloading the different kinds of remote sensing data. There's login here for Landsat data and it is in the usgs.gov. Then there's a login for us and what is data there is the earthdata.nasa.gov then there is the login for sentinel data and there's the copernicus you and you can actually log into these first by copying this link or clicking on this link and then opening it in a in your browser and registering then you can bring in your username here and your password as soon as you are registered in uh, 
Earth Explorer. If you want to get Modis or Asta data, you can actually go to this link here, click, select all these, all, all these links, uh, paste it in your browser, then register. You can also do the same thing for these here. If you want to Sentinel data, you can actually copy the whole of this link and paste it in your browser. Then get the user, username and your password. And then make sure that when you bring your username and your password here, because maybe if you're working on your personal computer, always click on remember password so that you don't need to actually enter your password every time you want to download any kind of data. So you can actually put all of them here. Once you do that, I've already done that for all of them. So the next thing you want to do is you're going to select the download options. And there are very, very many downloads options you can actually put. For the Landsat bands, you can actually decide the kind of bands you want to actually download. If you uncheck a certain band here, it will not be downloaded. So you can actually just check the bands that you want to, to download from here. You can also do the same thing for the Sentinel data. You can actually uh, select the kinds of bands. If you leave them checked, all, if you leave all of them checked, then it means you'll be downloading the whole data for that scene that you have just selected. And you can do the same thing for the Sentinel, the Sentinel bands. So after looking at the login and the download options, we are going to go to now the search. Now we want to search for our Landsat 8 data. Make sure that the product here is Landsat 8. If you are actually going to download Landsat 8, if you're downloading any other kind of data, just scroll and select whichever kind of data you want to download. So Landsat 8 data. Now the next thing you want to do is you can actually have the latitudes and the longitudes for the upper left and the lower right. But for our case, we don't have the latitudes and the longitudes to input here. So what I'm going to do is now, I'm just going to introduce a base map here so that you can actually look at the area that we want to get our data from. So I'm going to just minimize this first. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the HMGS plugin, then I'm going to introduce a base map, and I'm going to just bring in the Google Satellite Hybrid. Then I'm going to zoom in to the area I want to get my data here. And it's around, it's around like Albert here in Uganda. So I want to get the Landsat 8 data for this area. So I'm going to now bring back my semi-automatic classification doc here. Now, I'm going to now use this uh, set area in the map. So I'm going to click on this once. Then I'm going to just minimize, and you can see a plus icon appears. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the top left by right clicking, and then by left clicking, and then the bottom right by right clicking. And I have selected my area of interest. So after selecting my area of interest, I'm now going to go now back to this dock here, and you can actually see now the coordinates of the my upper left and the lower right have been added here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go now to the other criteria. I can actually change the dates here to different dates. So I can maybe say from January 1st, 2021. That to today. So I, I want some Lancet 8 data for that coverage period. So then the cloud cover, I can say instead of 100, I can say maybe say 10 again. Then I can click on find. Then it will start looking for my product. And then you can see it has loaded actually some images here. And you can see I only have three results. So maybe to improve my result count, I can actually just come here and say maybe the maximum cloud cover, I can just actually increase it to 30%. Then click on find again. And you can now see I have even many more results for that area of interest. So the next thing I'm going to do is I can actually come under the download option here. I can remove this pre-processing of the image because you are actually going to learn how to do the pre-processing of the image. Then load bands to QGIS. You can actually load them directly to QGIS if you want. So I'm going to leave these only if preview in layers. So I'm going to actually be able to just download data that I've already actually selected and previewed in my QGIS here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select maybe, let me select image seven. 
then click on the preview of image 7 and when I move aside you can actually see that is the preview of where my image is and if I'm satisfied with this image then I can just return here and because I have actually said only if preview in layers I can just click on run here so that I can start downloading my Landsat, Landsat 8 image here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to now click on run and I'm going to save it in the Landsat, Landsat 8 data I'm going to select that folder again and my download starts so this also takes a little bit of a while if I minimize here you can actually see it's downloading my Landsat data and is at 1% so this actually takes quite some time to download because it's a big file so I am going to share the results of my download in the next lesson that's it that is how you can actually download Landsat 8 data 1 by using the Earth Explorer and 2 by using QGIS SCP plugin. Be sure to join us in the next lesson where we will now go a step further and do the different kinds of analysis using the Landsat 8 data. If you found this video useful and you want to learn more on QGIS, subscribe to my channel. For those who want to take up a complete course from basic to advanced GIS, you can register with WiseJS Academies by following the link in the description. Otherwise, I'm just happy you're here. See you in my next lesson.